We are going to finish up this um, worksheet for section 14.1. Uh, we had already done the first um, A through F parts, and so we just have this G left at the end. I went ahead and just recopied the um, preference table down here for us so that we can uh, reference it a little easier instead of having to scroll up and down. But we want to find out which candidate is the winner using the pairwise comparison method. So in this example, what we see is we do have four candidates. There's A, B, C, and D. Um, so we need to come up with all of the comparisons between those. So remember, we need to pair up each um, candidate with every other candidate. So say like A needs to go versus B, and A versus C, and A versus D. And remember, with four candidates, we're going to end up with six total comparisons. So then next we could say pair up B with people, so B versus C, and B versus, say, D, and then our last one would be C versus D. And we're going to do each of these head-to-heads. So let's start with um, A versus B. So what we're doing then down here, remember, is we're going column by column and just comparing A and B. So we're ignoring everybody else and just saying if we only look at A versus B, who is preferred, and in this instance it would be A is preferred because they're listed higher than B, so A is going to win those 15 votes. And then in the second column we look at A and B, and we're looking for who's preferred, and we can say, well, B is preferred because they're ranked above A, so B is going to get the 12 votes. And then in the third column, A is preferred to B, so A is going to get those 10. And then in the fourth column, just looking at B and A, B is preferred, so B is going to get those four. So in total, B has 16, but A has 25, so A is the winner of that head-to-head. -head. So then when we come down here and keep track of our points, for all of our candidates A, B, C, and D, A just won themselves one point because they were um, the winner of that head-to-head. -head. I'm going to go ahead and erase these marks I made on the table so that I can do it again with our next head-to-head. -head. So now we can take a look at A versus C. So with A versus C, we'd have A and C here. So A is preferred, so those 15 points are going to be awarded to A. And then we've got, in the second column, C and A are here, so C is preferred. So C gets 12. And then A to C, we've got A is preferred, so A gets 10. And then A to C, we've got C is preferred, so C gets 4. So again, we have a 25 to 16, so A is the winner. Now we can look at A versus D. So A's, we can mark all the A's and D's. So looking at just A and D, A's preferred in the first column for 15. And then in the second column, D is preferred because it's ranked higher than A, so they get 12. And then D is higher than A in the third, so they get 10. And then D is higher than A in the last one as well, so they also get 4. So A got the 15, and then D has 26. So D wins in the second one. Or the third pairwise, excuse me. Now we can look at B and C. B versus C in the first column, B is preferred, B gets 15. In the second column, C is preferred, C gets 12. In the third column, B is preferred, so B gets 10. And in the third column, B is preferred again, so B gets 4. So B has 29 votes versus C's 12, so B wins 1 point. And then we can look at B and D. So we've got 
B versus D, B wins 15 votes. B versus D in the second column, B wins 12 votes. B versus D in the third column, D wins, they're preferred, so they get 10. And then in the last column, D is preferred to B, so D gets four. So D has 14, but B has, let's see, 27. So then we would see that B received more. So B's at two points. And then last one, we've got C versus D to take a look at. So C versus D in the first one, D is preferred. D gets 15. C versus D in the second one, C gets 12. C versus D in the third, D gets 10. And C versus D in the fourth, D gets four. So C has 12 points and or votes and D has 29, so D wins. So this is a really interesting example for pairwise comparison. Well, remember what we do now is to try and decide a winner, we look at who got the most points. But what we can see is we actually have a three-way tie. So we would end up with a three-way tie between um, A and B and D. So this is one of the interesting things with this pairwise comparison method that we can see. We talked in the past about kind of different pros and cons of various methods. And this is a con of this method is that it is fairly prone to ending up with ties in this method, which obviously is not ideal for the sake of trying to determine a winner of an election. So um, at this point, we're not going to we haven't created any sort of tiebreaker, um, so we're just going to end the problem by saying that there was a tie. You could create a tiebreaker, so you could come up with some secondary rule that you would use in case of a tie, um, which is probably what would end up happening. But just uh, kind of be aware that this is something that is, I mean, it can happen with other methods as well, like with board account, you could get exactly the same number of points. And with plurality, you could have the same number of first choice votes. But those are a little bit harder to do than um, just winning the same number of head-to-head -head comparisons. So. Well, it is a very good technique and it does have a lot of pros on its side, this is one con to this method.